Okay, now let's apply what we've learnt to an actual exam question. Goodbye, whiteboard. All right, let me zoom into this. Um, there we go. All right, so the question says, this is taken from a VCAR paper, the feasible region for a linear programming problem is shaded in the diagram below. So this one here, that is our feasible region. All right, the equation of the objective function for this problem is in the form this. The dotted line passing through the point, so this dotted line here, has the same slope as the objective function. Now remember, the objective function is the function that makes up our sliding line. So if this, so we're told here that um, this dotted line has the same slope. And remember, the slope is the only thing that matters in a sliding line, because if you're sliding the line, the y-intercept does not matter at all, because it can be slided anywhere. Um, only the gradient matters. So if it has the same slope as the objective, um, sorry, if the objective function has the same slope as the dotted line, then that means this line is our sliding line. So what is the question asking us for? The minimum value of the objective fun function can be determined by calculating its value at STU or, um, yeah, so we've got to find which of these points is going to be the minimum value this time. So because we're looking for a minimum, we actually have to slide downwards. So we align our pen or our ruler, whatever we're using, with the line that we have. And we're sliding down because we want to find the minimum. So if I slide down this way, I see that this line is actually parallel to these two lines. And the last points that I pass are both of these two at the same time. So what that means is our answer has to be S and T. So if you look at the answers here, um, one of the options says any point along the line segment ST, and that's going to be our answer. So this problem can be easily solved with the sliding line method. If we were to use the intercept method, that would not really work. Well, actually it would work, but it would take a lot longer because then we'd have to find the equation of this line using these points, and then we'd have to substitute each of these numbers into that, and that would take a lot of time. Whereas um, using the sliding line, we can just grab our pen, put it on the dotted line, slide it down to find the minimum, and we can easily see it passes through S and T. Let's do one more example. So I have this um, question as well. We, I won't read through the whole thing, but this spot here is the feasible region, that tiny area there. So in this question, the x-axis is the number of members staying at Bushman's track at a campsite. The y is the number of members staying at the Lower Creek campsite. So, and these constraints are all about how many people are able to stay at each campsite. And if we look here, the first question is giving us the cost of each of the campsites. And the question says, find the total maximum cost of accommodation. So if we want to find the maximum, we're firstly going to have to find what our objective function is. So if we look here, it's given to us. So Bushman's track is 130, Lower Creek is 110. So we know Bushman's track is, um, Bushman's track is the x-axis. So we can say that it's going to cost 130 times x plus um, Lower Creek is 110. So it's going to be 110 times y because y is, um, y is Lower Creek. So that is going to equal our cost. That is our function. Now remember what I said about the easy way to plot a line is by switching the axis. So we're going to do that. So on our working out, we can just write um, the um, axis intercepts for this. We're just going to switch it. So that means y will equal to 130 and x will equal to 110. So I just switch the coefficients. Now obviously on my graph, if you look here, um, the y only goes up to 22 and the x only goes up to 15. But my intercepts are in the hundreds. So what am I going to do? Well, think of it this way. If you think of the gradient, it's rise over run. That is a fraction. Fractions are ratios, which means they can be simplified. For example, if you think of the fraction 8 over 4, that is equivalent to the fraction 4 over 2, which is equivalent to the fraction 2 over 1. And it's the same thing with these. So think of these two as ratios, not fixed numbers. So these two can be simplified um, if we just divide by 10. Um, it would just be 13 and 11. So I've just gotten rid of the zeros. All right, so 13 and 11, that works well because I have 13 on my graph and I have 11 on my graph. So I'm going to do the same thing. So getting my pen or ruler, whichever one you like, and I'm, I know that the intercept is 
13, the intercept here is 11. So now that I've aligned my ruler, oof, 13, there we go, um, I can slide it now. So 13 and 11, I want to find, I'm looking to find the maximum, so that means I'm going to have to slide up. So if I slide up with this line, the last point I reach is this corner point here. So this point here. So the total maximum cost is going to occur at this point here. So then what you'd have to do is just find out what are the coordinates of this point, And then you just substitute these points into this. I'm not going to show you how to do that because I'm sure you already know. This is faster than the other method because instead of having to um, substitute all the values of this feasible region in, we just have to substitute that one value. And that is how to use the sliding line method.